Welcome to the city of Neverwinter, the jewel of the north. Or here's a woman saying she needs Lily's help, Bethany. And by her portrait, she looks quite young. Please, can you help me? You're with the city militia, aren't you? The guards at the gate said I might get help over here, but I don't know if they were serious or not. All right, Lily telling her to slow down. Thank you. Thank you for listening. You look so right. I just had to ask you for help. You must be an officer, right? I hope you can help. It's the Peninsula District. <laughs> Not sure Lily wanted to hear that. I live in there and... Oh, it's just horrible. The killing. Everybody's running for their lives. It's horrible. I think we'll assume she's as young as her portrait makes her look. Of course, Lily has some sympathy, but she doesn't have all day either. Okay, okay. I came from the Peninsula District. That's where my home is, or was. Now it's too dangerous to go there. The prisoners are killing everyone. It's awful. Yeah, of course, I think we heard from Tommy the Grin that the warden had released the prisoners. I think Lily would like to hear uh, Bethany's version of it. I don't know. I just don't know. Captain Elephant has always run such an efficient operation. I hope nothing's happened to him. I mean... I don't know him personally or anything, but I hear he's a good man. I know he'd not have allowed this to happen. Asking why there's a problem if the Neverwinter Guard is there in the district. The plague has cut down on the guards in the area. It was safe while people were locked up, but now it's just overwhelming. Some are trying, though. Sato Sibyl is there. She's one of Lord Nash's trusted, but she doesn't have many people to work with. She's mainly just guarding the gate out of the district now. That's well, certainly interesting. Sato Sibyl. Lord Nasher's trusted. Lily doesn't want to go to the Peninsula District, but I think if she finds herself there, she'll probably want to meet Sibyl. Ask him more about the Peninsula District. Well, it's kind of complicated. The Peninsula District houses the Neverwinter Prison. The families of the guards and such live around it. It's been safe for years. It changed a little while ago, though. The guards never came home from work one day, and now the prisoners are everywhere. First the plague, now the threat of a knife in your belly. Well, Lily has no intention on looking into this personally, <laughs> but she'll be sure to report it to somebody else. Telling Bethany to stay where it's safe. Thank you. I can't say how much this means to me. Asking Lily if she needs directions telling her whether she does or not. All right. That the gate is by the Moonstone Mask. There are guards posted, but I'm sure they'll let you through. Lily's sure as well. Neverwinter. Some believe that the city is named that because of how warm the waters are. Of the Neverwinter River, which runs from the city itself, heated by fire elementals underground near Mount Hetnow to the east. So warm, in fact, that the harbor never freezes. But Lily always understood it differently. It's never winter because of the city's skilled gardeners, skilled enough to keep flowers blooming in spell-sheltered arbors throughout the city even in the coldest of winter months. In fact, those gardeners are the ones who gave the city its nickname, the City of Skilled Hands. Otherwise, the city itself is a walled one of over 17,000 humans and half-elves, and over 700 miles north of the city of Boulder's Gate. It's laid out roughly in the shape of an eye. The long axis runs roughly east and west along the Neverwinter River. In the center of the city sits Castle Never, and around the keep is a circular walk from which radiate the three main bridges spanning the river towards the southern half of the city. The Dolphin, the Winged Wyvern, and the Sleeping Dragon Bridges. A bleeding eye? Perhaps. Either way, here is Castle Never itself. Yes? Do make it quick! Of course, this is Mullen, the administrator, in front of the doors to Castle Never. On Lord Nasher's behalf, I welcome you to the gates of Castle Never. Unfortunately, however, I cannot allow you entry. <laughs> to protect the castle against plague, it is closed to all but Lady Arabeth. That is all I can say. All right. Lily stating she's just recently joined under her service, or service under Arabeth, requesting entry. I can't say anything more. 
To ease panic, only our proven allies are kept brief on the state of affairs. Huh. Yes? Do make it quick. As I have said, only the proven allies of Neverwinter will have access to the castle in this dark time. Lily didn't think it would be that easy to see Lord Nasher, but still, she's wondering how far she'll have to go to prove herself an ally. Dusk approaches, and Lily still hasn't even secured lodging yet. Near the castle is a rather plain but wealthy-looking noblewoman, an elf with a very deep and sad expression on her face. Lily wonders if maybe she's come from the castle. Welcome to you. Our Isabon, an elven woman. Well, hello there. You seem to be of noble blood like me. We must stick together in these horrible times, don't you think, my fine-mannered friend? Yeah, I think Lily'd like to trouble her with some questions. I suppose one still needs to breathe and miss one's mourning. Perhaps it helping you, I'm also helping my friend's spirits find their rest. Well, she really is noble, although I have to admit, she doesn't quite look it with this outfit. <laughs> She's probably wondering if she comes from Black Lake. I don't usually have much regard for those that lose their way, but, well, the wailing changes everything, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, asking about the Black Lake District. The Black Lake District... My friends lived and now have died there. The militia won't let me attend the funeral, though. They said they'd pass on my regards. But beyond my personal affection for my home... So she does indeed come from Black Lake. The Black Lake is where the best hope of beating the plague will arise. But that's not for your ears. Well, <laughs> certainly she can tell Lily. I suppose I could mention a detail or two. It's not as though it hasn't been bandied about among my circle. You see, Black Lake will not fall to the plague quietly. There have been measures taken, stockpiling, and certain acquisitions. I can't say much more, but my friends have not died in vain. They exposed themselves to the plague that other nobles in the Black Lake might survive. Certainly interesting. All right, bidding her a good night. Fare thee well. I must return to my private mourning. It's the only way I have to grieve. Nobles hoarding food and protecting themselves from the plague. Well, Lily can understand that. In fact, she'd even go so far as to help them. The wealthy never forget to return a favor, and Lily has no doubt that they'd remember hers and likely shower her with gratitude when all this wailing death nonsense is finally over with. Do business to you. Huh. Best keep your magics to yourself around here, madam. Some blame sorcery for the plague. <laughs> Lily should probably start to ask a few questions. Officially start her investigation, as it were. Hello. All right, Hallian, a member of the militia, apparently. Good morning to you, citizen. Wait, are you a new recruit? Hi, they're replacing the ones we've lost, are they? I'll help if I can. Really expected no less. <laughs> yeah, I think she's curious if he has anything to report, anything odd or rumors. All I hear is how bad things are getting. How many more men we've lost? It's like a war, except you can't make the Wailing surrender. With us gone, the different districts each hold their intrigues, I'm sure. All I know is that we're fighting a losing battle, even here on the core. All right. Stay alive out there. Lily has been hearing him the entire time she's been outside, but only now did she actually notice a doomsayer. Woe to the unrepentant, for they shall be struck down. Of course, this is a doomsayer. He's comparing Neverwinter to Falorm. The wailing heralds the end of days. An empire that fell over 1,000 years ago. Death is the price we pay for our arrogance. Nonsense. And this guard, doing nothing about it. 
What is he guarding? Hello. Yeah, I think Lily's curious while well, one what he's doing. <laughs> Apparently, he doesn't look very busy, <laughs> as he probably should be, and what he might be guarding here. Or asking if he has anything to report. But apparently he doesn't. Alright. Okay. I go home. Also telling Lily to stay alive out there. He must be guarding some kind of malicious storage. In fact, there's a second storage tower in the distance. If she can find a specialist later, she'll have to commandeer supplies from it. Her investigation, of course. If there's anything left, she wouldn't be surprised if those beggars looted everything already. Living inside. Probably nothing but filthy plague-ridden bedrolls and Lily doesn't even want to imagine what else. There are many places Lily would like to visit. The Cloak Tower especially, but it'll have to wait until she's secure lodging. And this elf. Most curious and out of place. But she's not going to rent the tree limb for the night. The city gates. Lily arrived not even a month ago. Nobody told her she'd have to stay. She wonders if serving Lady Arabeth grants her the privilege to leave. Hope! Oh. Passage from the city of Neverwinter is forbidden. We cannot risk the plague being spread to the surrounding countryside. All right, this is Abarum, the city gate guard. Of course, Lily stating that she serves Lady Arabeth and Lord Nasher, requesting to be let pass. I don't care if you're the bloody Avatar of Ilmater himself. You're not getting through this gate. Nobody passes this point until a cure is found. Alright, asking who the last one was through the gate. No one has exited the city recently. I would not allow it. The danger to the outside lands is too great. I'm trusted with the grave duty of keeping the whole of the North free of plague, and you want to chat me up? <laughs> Please, just leave me to my duty. I can't lose focus. I can't let anyone gain my favor. Everyone's to be treated the same. Nobody gets out. Lily can't help but feel like a trapped rat on the sinking ship Neverwinter. For a second, she wonders if she made a mistake coming here. It doesn't help either that she'll likely be spending the night at the refugee shelter. Like a rotten beggar. She almost wishes she had a bottle of Dandalus' sparkling green to go with her misfortune. Welcome to Neverwinter, home of the Wailing Death. Lily's glad at least she's alone for the night, here at the refugee center. Scavenging like a common thief. Humiliating. If she's lucky, she'll find a Neverwinter knife. The city's famous for producing them. Tiny jeweled daggers made to be concealed in a hair comb, belt buckle, or bracelet. It would serve better than her hairpin, of course. But... Knowing her luck, she'll find one of those damnable water clocks the city's also so famous for producing. Accurate to five minutes a year. It's actually quite good, but it's not something you carry around with you. And of course, it requires water. If she does find one, by the clocks of Neverwinter, she'll be able to know exactly how many hours she's been lying awake trying to rest in this accursed place. The room reminds her of her secret bedroom at the old Zoblob shop. She thinks about Shindia, and actually wonders if the half-drought misses her. Lily almost doesn't want to admit it, but she wouldn't mind waking up to see her flash of white hair and teeth through a hole in the wall in the morning. But there's no cupboard here, and no friend either. Just the plague, and herself, alone. Yeah, and I have to say one thing that I think is strange, and I don't actually remember it to be the case, but when you rest in this game, no time actually passes in-game. 
So there's actually no way to force, well, for example, daylight or nighttime. I just don't actually remember it that way, but apparently that's the case. Not sure why they don't make time actually pass. Actually, while I'm bringing that up, I should also apologize about the audio. I'm still struggling with the voices volume. I guess the problem is, is that it controls both the NPC voice volume during conversation as well as the audio taunts during combat, which are typically a lot louder. So, if it's the right volume for conversation, once combat starts, it's too loud. <laughs> And if I lower it, then you can't hear it during conversation, but obviously it sounds about right during combat. So I'm not sure I'm actually going to find a good medium, but uh, I'm still trying to figure that out. So apologies uh, while I am. Lily vows not to stay at the refugee shelter any longer. It's neither good for her health nor her state of mind. She needs to find superior lodging, not some nest for the plague and a specialist as well. If she's lucky, maybe she'll have white hair and a bright white smile too.